Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. When I've been reading the news lately, I've noticed a lot of headlines about stimulus and government spending in one form or another. And I really feel like we are just about on the verge of an era of money creation and debt and spending like we have never seen before. So let me read for you just a few of these headlines. The first one, Democrats urge President Biden to forgive $50,000 in student loan debt. And I'll read you just a little piece from this article. A group of Democrats urged Biden to use executive action to forgive $50,000 in federal student debt for all borrowers. The group, which included Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York and Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, said that would boost the economy and help close the nation's racial wealth gap. Biden has said he supports up to $10,000 in student loan forgiveness. Okay, so some people might not even view this as stimulus. What you have to understand is that if student loans are forgiven, whether by legislation or executive order or whatever, that money has to come from somewhere. And in this case, this bad debt will basically be taken on by the government. And guys, we have $1.7 trillion of student debt in this country. The government doesn't have $1.7 trillion. This money is going to have to be printed. $1.7 trillion isn't chump change either. And printing that much money will definitely have an inflationary effect. Also, don't forget that the students who have their debts forgiven will now be able to spend the money that they've been using to pay off those loans on other things in the economy. If this goes through, a lot more money is going to be chasing the same amount of goods and services. And you know what that means. So the next headline I want to read to you guys is this one. Mitt Romney has a child allowance plan, and it's better than Biden's. And I'll read to you a little bit from this story. On Thursday, the Utah senator introduced the Family Security Act, a bill that would provide all non-rich households in the United States with $350 a month for every child they are raising who is younger than five years old, and $250 a month for every child between the ages of six and 17, up to a maximum of $1,250 a month. In addition to these benefits, new parents would collect a $1,400 payment just before their child's birth. Put differently, if Romney's bill passes, then the parents of a child born next year will receive $62,600 in child support from Uncle Sam by the time that kid turns 18. Okay, I think the biggest takeaway from this headline is that support for universal basic income in all of its various incarnations and all of this massive government spending is not just from one party. We have gone full-blown modern monetary theory on both sides of the political aisle now. Neither party is advocating any kind of real fiscal restraint. At this point, it's just a race to buy votes and create the most popular stimulus programs. That brings us to a headline about the actual stimulus, the one that we call stimulus, even though all of these programs are basically stimulus in one form or another, although I do think it's probably debatable how much they actually stimulate the economy. I will say, I do think ultimately these programs will be stimulating to the price of silver. So that's something to take note of. So here's your third headline. Third stimulus check. Will you get a $1,400 check? And I'll read a little bit from this article for you as well. President Joe Biden's $1.9 trillion coronavirus relief plan would provide a third round of federal stimulus checks to millions of Americans. Yet while lawmakers on both sides of the aisle have expressed support for the proposal, there is less agreement on who should be eligible for the $1,400 direct payments. So again, it's both sides of the aisle. Everyone agrees now that we need massive money creation and stimulus. It's just a matter of agreeing on the details. There is no one opposing the fundamental idea of stimulus, only how exactly it should be implemented. But honestly, for all of us stackers out there, uh, this widespread belief in and acceptance of modern monetary theory, uh, MMT, the belief that everything is free and the central bank can just create fiat currency endlessly with no consequences whatsoever, it's really a gift. 
What I mean by this is that because so many people have adopted this magical thinking of MMT, they think everything's going to be okay. They don't understand that all of this money creation is eventually going to unleash a tidal wave of inflation. And because most people don't understand this yet, the price of precious metals, especially silver, is still extremely cheap. I mean, right now, we are on the brink of money printing and debt creation, the likes of which we have never seen before. And silver is under $30 an ounce. Its price was higher than this in 2011. It was higher than this in 1980. And we know how much inflation we've had since then. But the fact that in the face of everything we are seeing unfold, the price is still so low, I view this as a massive opportunity. Because at some point, the effects of all this debt and money creation and the debasement of our currency is going to become obvious to everyone. And when that happens, you want to see a silver squeeze? You're going to see the life squeezed out of this stuff. If this comes to pass, and we have some kind of currency crisis or dollar collapse, the word squeeze isn't going to do justice what will happen to the price of precious metals. Now, is it possible that this doesn't come to pass? Of course. The economy could limp along without a crisis, and the lockdowns could all be lifted, and we could have a recovery of some sort, for a while at least. Even if this is the case, though, I think precious metals will still continue to appreciate, just maybe at a slower pace. But really, eventually, the debt we are creating will catch up to us. With the dollar as the world's reserve currency and the U.S. using that privilege to finance a massive and growing trade deficit every year, there is only one eventual outcome. And speaking of our massive trade deficits and the ultimate fate of the dollar, a really great book that I recently read on the subject is The Dollar Crisis by Richard Duncan. I picked up a copy of this a couple months ago when I heard Neil McCoy Ward recommend it on his channel. So shout out to Neil, thanks for the recommendation, it turned out to be a great book. It's a little dry, but Duncan does a pretty thorough job of explaining how our current monetary system is unsustainable, and he goes into all the minutia to explain why. This updated edition was written back in 2005, and it's a little bit eerie to read it because Richard Duncan accurately predicted so much of what has happened since the book was written. And I believe we are now getting into the terminal phase of his predictions where we will have a real dollar crisis. Now, as you all know, none of this is financial advice. I don't provide financial advice on this channel. But I will provide some book reading advice, and The Dollar Crisis is one book I would advise you to read. I'll put a link in the description for anyone who's interested in picking up a copy. One other thing I wanted to talk about briefly, guys, is the delays on shipping of physical bullion and what's going on with the silver squeeze. I mentioned in a recent video that new stackers might have to wait a while to get the bullion they ordered recently because delivery times are so backed up. I had several people comment on that video that they had already received the bullion that they ordered over the silver squeeze weekend and that shipping times were prompt. Well, that has not been the case in my experience. I actually placed a small order with SD Bullion back on January 25th, before anyone had even heard of the Silver Squeeze. And today, February 9th, it still has not shipped. The order status just shows that payment has been received. And look, this isn't a dig at SD Bullion. I think they're a great company and I've always had a good experience with them. But I'm just pointing out that there are still significant supply chain issues in the retail physical bullion market. Maybe the people who are getting their orders uh, on time, maybe they paid for expedited shipping, I don't know. But I think the supply of physical metal is still extremely tight, and it will be for the near future. So any significant move up in demand could send premium soaring even higher and reveal that there is indeed a growing gap between the price of physical metal and the paper price of silver. If any of you watching have ordered physical bullion lately, I'd like to hear about what your wait times have been like, so let us all know in the comments below. And I know a lot of us, myself included, have been spending a lot more time at home for the past year than usual, with quarantines and lockdowns and everything that's happened, and a great way to spend that time is by reading and educating ourselves. So if you're looking for something to read, definitely click that link in the description and pick up a copy of The Dollar Crisis by Richard Duncan. It's a great read for any stacker. Alright everybody. That wraps up this video. 
Thank you all very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Smart Silver Stacker out.